Let me ask you a question. Do you know what's the number one limitation of most iPhone photographers? They believe that they have to portray the world exactly as they see it. And because of this belief, they're limited to creating photos that only show what can be seen by the eye. But what if I told you that you don't have to stop at creating natural looking edits? That you can go beyond reality and create stunning works of real serious art with nothing but your iPhone? What if I told you that you can create any story and composition you desire, and that you can take several photos to combine them into one surreal masterpiece that is guaranteed to leave your friends and family speechless? Let me assure you, all of this is possible, and in this video, I'll show you how. My name is Mark Hemmings. I'm an internationally recognized professional photographer and photography teacher. And I want to share with you the four easy steps to create stunning, print-worthy photo art, even if you don't think you have a special talent or artistic ability. You see, the truth is that these four steps are so powerful that if you apply them to your own works of art, they will never be the same again. Anyone who uses them can get outstanding results. So, if you're ready to start creating your own stunning works of iPhone photo art, Let's begin. Okay, step number one is to select your base layer. But first of all, you may say, what is a layer? Well, a layer is a two or more separate photos that are combined to create your final piece of art. These two different photos can be taken at totally different times. You don't need to take them at the same time. They can be completely unrelated photos. For example, one could be taken at an ocean, the other one in the middle of a city. And usually, you would have a base layer to create the initial idea and a main subject would come later as the second layer. Now let me give you a few examples of some backgrounds that work really well. Take a look at this landscape photo of this street scene in Tokyo. Now even though there's a lot of bright lights and you can feel the energy of the city, there's no main subject that's going to compete for the attention of the main primary subject that we're going to put in after. Also, what about this uh, wonderful blue house? Do you see how plain the exterior is? It's nice and blue, but it doesn't have anything that's going to distract the viewer. In fact, it's a wonderful blank canvas to eventually come up with this image where we overlaid text and we overlaid different assets and uh, came up with a really great final product, which is a painted image. Or what about this old Gothic looking house? The house has a, a lot of features in it, but there's nothing that's really stealing the attention from the overall finished product, which is this textured look that has this additional sky with this wonderful circular sun dog added to it. Now, what about patterns? Patterns work amazing as background layers. Because they don't really have a main subject, you can actually place anything you want onto a pattern subject, for example, all of these wonderful soft stones work really well as a base layer for adding something like this uh, beautiful flower. Always look for a background that's going to support your second layer, which is going to be your main subject usually. Now, when you're thinking about choosing your base layer, you want to make sure that your base layer doesn't have any competing subject matter. For example, you'd probably want it to be fairly featureless so that your main subject, which is going to come later, the second layer, has all the attention going on to that. Uh, you need to have the base layer visually support the photo. Is it the foundation of the artwork? And can you visually build upon the base layer? For example, does your idea rest on that base layer? If the answer to those are yes, then you are really on your way. Now, a really great question is, how do you really quickly get your first base layer? Well, you could photograph your house, for example. Uh, eventually, you would be able to create something like this where you have amazing lights coming out of your very own window or doorway. That's a really great way to quickly get your base layer. Or another great option is there's quite a few websites that offer free photo assets. For example, you could get your own picture of a, an ocean or a lake to use as an example as your base layer. 
And these websites will allow you to download the image so that you can practice creating your own artwork. Now the second step is choosing your main subject. Now your main subject is usually the second layer that goes on top of the base layer. Now what is the most important thing? Well, to have a very interesting main subject because all of the attention from your viewers is going to go on to that main subject. So having a very dynamic or interesting looking subject is key. Another thing is having a similar angle. Take a look at this example shot. My photograph of the statue was taken at the same angle as my photograph of this forest. Therefore, the two mixed well together. The uh, main subject feels that it could actually have been placed inside the forest for real. Also, what about similar lighting? Take a look at this sailboat shot. We can really see how the light is strongly shining on the side of the boat. When I combine the picture with this main subject of this yellow car, the yellow car also has an almost identical shadow. So we have a really good mix of lighting. That's very important. On that note, it's always much easier to uh, put two different images together with sort of uh, an overcast or cloudy day. That's a nice little tip because you don't have to worry about those harsh shadows. Now, what about this? Does your subject visually belong to the base layer? When I say that, I want to give you full creative control over your two layers. However, do the two layers sort of uh, work well together visually? I mean, does uh, the viewer feel that this is uh, a good mixture or a good choice for the two layers? Let me give you an example of this. Take a look at this VW bug. Even though it's not normal to have a grassy roadway, the grass actually works well and it visually belongs to the picture of the Volkswagen bug. So we could say that the two images or the two layers visually belong to each other and it's successful. Okay, now things that are not so important are color balance. Now you may have one layer like the background layer that has a bluish color to it and maybe your subject matter, your second layer, has a bit of a yellow tone. Well, don't worry because you can always correct that in the editing software. And this is something that we're going to do. Let me give you an example right now. We have two different layers, two different color balances. However, with a simple slide of the color balance adjusting slider, we can actually correct the two to make it look really good. Also, the same with exposure. Now, one layer may be bright, the other one may be dark, but possibly the two layers together are going to look really good. So all we need to do is adjust exposure to have both layers look good together. Okay, how about some examples of choosing some really great main subjects? Well, an interesting looking person is really ideal. For example, take a look at this shot of a, a woman who I was able to combine into this doorway inside an old Mexican building. The woman's really interesting looking and so is the background, so it works great. Or what about a portrait? For example, I photographed this mannequin inside a store and I was able to use the mannequin to create this sci-fi effect, something that you can easily do as well. So the mannequin works really well as an interesting looking subject. Now what about a truck or a boat? For example, in this shot, using a truck, I was able to use this visually interesting aspects and combine it to this really surrealistic, strange looking image. Now you could also use shadows or silhouettes for really interesting and strange images like this uh, shadow or this ghostly type figure that was overlaid on this really strange looking path full of thorns and bushes. Now trees always work well as really great foregrounds or main subjects. They're so readily available and they're very poetic and metaphoric. You can tell many different stories with trees. And when you combine them with a really interesting background layer, the image really comes alive and has a lot of visual value. Okay, now what about a quick way to get your first main subject? Well, you can photograph a tree like this last example because you can use it for so many different background layers. A tree works great. All you need to do is just make sure that you get different 
perspectives or different angles of that tree so you can place that tree in many different backgrounds. That's really important. Or what about a person? Maybe you have a friend or family member who can stand in in an interesting place and you can use that person to place into a background. People are always extremely interesting. Again, make sure that you get a couple different angles of the person so you can really easily place them into any background that you desire. Now to explain this even better, I have an amazing tutorial demo for you. And I'm gonna take these two images and eventually combine them into this final abstract work of art. I've chosen this great photo of the ocean as my base layer, and I'm gonna build upon it by sort of putting this empty house on top of it as if the water was flowing through the empty room. Now, the reason why the water makes a really good base layer is that the water sort of uh, is the supporting element or the foundation to the picture. Without the water, we really wouldn't have a story. Our artwork needs to tell a story, it has to have metaphor, and this base layer of the water works really well to create this surrealistic piece of art. Now the Superimpose app is ready to go. Now if you don't have the Superimpose app, please pause the video and download it. There's a link for downloading under this video and also a link to download the two sample photos. Okay, so at the top left, you're gonna see our import area. It's two little rectangles. I'm gonna get you to tap on it. And we can import a background. So go to photos and then locate the place where you downloaded and loaded the uh, two sample photos. And for me, it's in this folder. It's a picture of an ocean that I took. And when you tap on it, all you have to do is go to choose. You don't need to worry about cropping because I've already made sure that the image is appropriately sized for you. Okay, so the next step is to import our foreground layer, which is our secondary or layer that is above. I'm gonna get you to do the same thing. At the top left is our import area. We're gonna import foreground, go to photos, and just look for the empty white room. That's what we're gonna use as our foreground layer. Go to choose. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the room is a little bit smaller than the water. That's okay, all you need to do is go to transform and double tap anywhere within the room. Watch what happens. As you can see, the image snaps to the background. This is perfect. Don't worry about the fact that this is a little bit shorter than the background, it's no problem. Now there's two things I like to mention before we begin. I prefer to use a stylus, however you can do this job with your finger, it's no problem. Also, I like to rotate my iPhone to use the horizontal mode, but you're totally free to continue using in the vertical mode. Both will work equally well, so don't worry about it. Now, the first thing I want to do is erase the windows. The reason being is we want to reveal the background layer, which is the ocean. Now, to do this, it is so absolutely easy, and I'm really excited to share with you the masking tool. So, I'd like you to go to the mask icon, and at this point, I'd like you to zoom in with your two fingers. It's the pinch and zoom technique. As you can see, we can move the picture space anywhere we want. And I'd like you to go to the right, and we're going to just erase these windows. So pinch in to the extent that you want. Also, there's a little plus sign at the bottom right if you're in horizontal mode. That's called the mask mode. And to the left of it, there is a little area where all the brushes go. I'd like you to tap the magic wand tool. It's a wand that has a little bit of, uh, a few little stars on it. And all you need to do is, with your finger or your touch sensitive pen, just tap anywhere in the white, hold that tap and drag. And really, the work is done for us pretty much. It's so simple. I'd like you to just go to the white areas only. Now I'm gonna get my videographer to speed this process up because uh, it's the same for each window pane. All you need to do, tap and move up or down. Do you see how easy that is? Okay, so let's do all the window panes. Now, as you can see, I didn't use the magic wand tool for the more complicated areas. That's why we're gonna change from the magic wand tool, I'll get you to tap on it. Now, to the right of that, we have the normal brush. I'd like you to go to the normal brush. At this point, I'd like you just to easily 
and simply get rid of the areas that the magic wand tool was unable to, uh, to get. Now I purposely sort of made a mistake here to show you that you can easily undo any mistake. Go to your undo tool, which is a little arrow that's pointing backwards, tap on it, and we are all set. As you can see, I got uh, my mistake corrected. Now let's do that again. We're just going to erase. And also you're going to ask yourself, why are there two red dots? Well, that's a magnifying glass, and that really helps to do fine-tuned work. Okay, with two fingers, we can just pinch, and let's just go over and do some fine-tuned erasing. Now, I'm going to get my videographer to speed this up again, because all you're going to do is simply erase the areas that we didn't actually use the Magic Wand tool for. Okay, so that looks good. However, I need to do some fine-tuned work. Do you see how my brush is a little bit too large to get into the corners? No problem. At the very top left in horizontal mode, you're going to see a little gear icon. And that's our settings area. What I'd like you to do is tap on it, and under brush size, I'd like you to reduce the brush size quite a bit. Now the nice thing is we know exactly how large the brush will be because we have the red dot. And with a smaller brush, we can actually do some fine-tuned work in the corners, which is a little bit tricky at times when you're using a larger brush. And this small brush also gives us the ability to do fine-tuned work elsewhere in the picture. So once again, I'm going to get my videographer to speed this up. And what I'll get you to do is to do the fine-tuned work with the smaller brush. Okay, so I have the fine-tuning done. So with two fingers, the pinch and zoom technique, I'd like you to just see if you like the picture. Now, of course, we do have a little bit of a white trim around the window panes. That's okay, because we're going to, in the end, do a fine art finish, uh, a filter effect that will actually make this look more realistic and interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is erase the floor. The reason being is we want the water to appear to be totally filling this room. To do that, we're just going to stay in the normal brush tool, but we're going to increase the size of our brush by going to settings. And a little bit larger, probably 28 or 30 is fine. And very simply, we're just going to erase. Okay, now you'll notice that I did a general erasing with the large brush. And once again, I'd like you to make the brush smaller in order to do the fine tune work. Okay, so now with my two finger pinch and zoom, I'm just going to check my work. And I really like it. It's not fine tuned yet, but it's getting there. Now the next step is we're going to actually position the room exactly where we want it. I'd like you to go to transform because we're going to move the room up a little bit. So there's a little bit more realism with regards to how the room interacts with the ocean. So go to transform. And then I'd like you to bring the room up just to the point where we have the cresting of the waves. Do you see the waves that just appeared? Let me zoom in just so that you can see it a little bit better. What we want are these wave lines to be inside the room. To do that, of course, you just have to move the room around just so that you get to that point. And the reason we like this is because it adds a certain three-dimensionality to the picture. Now, go to Mask. Now, make sure that the foreground layer, the room, is evenly placed. So go to Transform. And it's a little bit tricky to make sure that it's placed well, but with a two-finger pinch and zoom, you can actually make it a little bit larger if you need to. Okay, do you see how we have a nice cresting wave there? We're going to make it even better. Go to mask, please. And now with two fingers, just zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is just fine tune this wave because we want to make it look as realistic as possible. To do that, we're already in our normal brush tool. Now, take a look at how I move my stylus. I'm sort of brushing really roughly this wave into existence within the house. We don't want a perfect wave, we want undulations. That's very important because we want this to look realistic. So we're going to scroll over and very roughly 
paint on the cresting of this wave. And I know it's going to look fantastic. And over here, and in order to do a fine tune job, just pinch in with your two fingers and we can actually work along the column really nicely. Okay, I feel that's probably decent. Let's check our work by zooming out. Now, do you see how much that adds to the picture? It's getting really dynamic and really abstract now, but we're not finished. Do you see how there's a, a crest of a wave here? This is where we're going to cover the base of the two columns. This is a really good technique because we want the base of the columns to look realistic as well. So please start masking or erasing along the crest of this wave. Watch what happens. There we go. Now that looks really good, a lot more realistic. Let's do the exact same thing on the other side. Do you see how there's a wave line going straight across here? There we go. Now it looks like there's real wave action happening inside the room. I really like the way it looks. Okay, so here is our picture. We are pretty much done all our work. All we need to do now is put the finishing touches on. It's usually the case that whenever you're doing a fine art, abstract, a surrealistic shot like this, that we finish the image with a fine art look. For us, we're going to actually make a black and white with both layers. So I'd like you to go to filter, and that is at the top right if you're in the horizontal mode. And you'll notice that we have the option of going to background or foreground. Don't worry about it, either is fine, because we're gonna do both. Now under the settings, tap on settings, and I'd like you to go over to the little icon that looks like a prism, and take your saturation all the way to minus 100. Now if you're doing this in vertical mode, uh, you're taking this slider all the way to the left. However, we're in horizontal mode, so we're gonna go straight down to minus 100. Okay, I'd like you to do the same thing for the foreground layer. Tap foreground and bring your saturation all the way to minus 100. Now this gives us a complete black and white picture. To see the whole image, tap on home, which is at your bottom right. And here we go. Our image is ready to roll. It's a surrealistic, very strange picture, but I really like it and I hope you like it as well. Now, I'd like to give you a few more really cool artistic finishes to round out your edit and to make it really interesting and dynamic. For example, textures. Textures are fantastic. Take a look at this shot with an A-frame house. It's a really cool shot without the texture. I really like it. However, it really comes alive when we add a texture. Now, a texture is simply a rough surface and it really adds a sort of three-dimensionality to your photos. It works really well. Now, what about a painterly effect? This uh, sort of uh, hipster cafe looks really good on its own, but when you add the painting effect, you take it to another level. It becomes a work of art. It's something that you can really see inside a magazine. What about fake light? It's so easy to create fake light in editing and it really adds to any type of image, especially, for example, this sci-fi cityscape that could be taken out of any Hollywood movie. Or stars. Stars are fabulous as a finishing touch. Uh, take a look at this night shot with this church steeple and the stars really add to the visual value of the picture. Now, what about retro or matte filters? These are really popular and they were popularized by such uh, apps as Instagram. If you don't overdo it, uh, you can get some really great finishing touches with a matte or a retro filter. Now, if you don't know what the word matte is, it's sort of like a low contrast look that sort of replicates the old film days and it really adds a finishing touch to your fine art shots. Also, normal color balance adjustments, for example, by adding blue to your picture, you can really get some interesting emotions out of your photos because colors produce different emotions. Maybe you want a cold, lonely image. Well, by adding blue, you can get that. Or a really happy, sunshiny image. By adding orange, you can get that emotion as well. Colors are so good as finishing touches. As you see, the steps I shared with you are extremely powerful, and once you start using them, 
they'll dramatically improve your own iPhone art projects. And while I showed you all of the steps in detail, there is so much more to learn and to know about iPhone photo art that I couldn't possibly cover in a short video like this. It actually took me about nine months of full-time research and hard work to master iPhone photo art. And that was on top of 20 years of professional photography experience. So if you have a lot of time, you're really good with technology, and you have experience with artistic projects, you could probably learn how to create iPhone photo art on your own. But I wanted to present an easier solution for people who want to create incredible works of serious photo art right now. And that's why I made iPhone Art Academy, which is the only online course that shows you how to create stunning, print-worthy iPhone photo art guaranteed to make jaws drop and heads turn. And now is the perfect time to join iPhone Art Academy. Only for a few more days, it has a huge discount. But once it expires, you'll have to pay the full price to join. So if you want to find out more about the course, you should do it right now to secure your discount. Click on the link below this video, and it will take you to the next page where you can learn more about iPhone Art Academy and see if the course is a good fit before your discount expires in just a few days. So click on the link below, and I'll see you on the next page.